Hey everybody, Dr. Wenzel. This is video two of what I think will be a four-part video series all about cholesterol, the truth about cholesterol. In, last, in the last video, we unpacked dietary cholesterol and the myth that it somehow impacts your serum cholesterol. It's just nonsense. The fact that we're still having that debate is really silly. Um, dietary cholesterol really has no impact on your serum levels. And if you didn't catch that video, please go back and, and dig into that because we're not going to cover that today. Today's video is all about the cholesterol that we make within our body. Every cell in the human body makes cholesterol and that cell will either utilize it or it will end up transporting it somewhere else to be stored, excreted, or recycled. The challenge becomes once that cholesterol needs to be transported, it, along with triglycerides, these are lipids, they cannot go into a water-based environment. They are what we call hydrophobic. They don't, they're, they're, they don't like water, just like oil and water, you, no matter how much you spin them, they don't become one consistent substance. They always stay separated because they don't like each other. So in order to transport them in an efficient way, we package them in something called a lipoprotein. Lipoproteins are just a big, 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 big um, transport vehicle that likes water, so it can navigate through the water just fine because protein doesn't have a problem with water. These lipoproteins are what we call hydrophilic. Once these lipoproteins have been created, uh, they get tagged with a surface protein, something called an apoprotein. Again, it's not important that you know the exact steps in this process and the biochemistry at the level of the liver. Just at a high level, just understand the basic flow. These apoproteins are very, very, very important because they help navigate this transport molecule through the entire system, uh, tagging it, if you will, and helping direct it through this very complex maze of biochemistry and physiology. Of all of the apoproteins that could be tagged on a lipoprotein, the two that are most significant, especially for this discussion of cholesterol and its overall um, impact it's having on your risk for cardiovascular disease is ApoB and ApoA1. Again, not totally critical that you understand all the details, but I do want you to pay attention to ApoB because this is the thing that everybody is missing. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody, including myself until recently, because I've really started to understand this and unpack this. This protein that sits on top of the lipoprotein, there are three lipoproteins that are found in the ApoB particle subset. And those are VLDL, IDL, and LDL. Most of us have heard of LDL. LDL is commonly referred to as bad cholesterol, which is a misnomer. Um, it's not bad or good, it just is. Um, Turns out that LDL makes up about 95 to 98% of all ApoB containing particles. This is very significant, very, very, very significant. The other Apo protein that we care about are ApoA1s, and this is essentially HDL, and we all know that as good cholesterol. Again, a misnomer, it's not good or bad, it just is, and we'll talk more about HDL in our future video next time. But for now, I want you to think of all ApoB tagged lipoproteins essentially are what I call delivery trucks. <laughs> Gross oversimplification, but it helps move the story along. Bear with me. Basically, ApoB tagged lipoproteins traffic energy to all cells. They are taking triglycerides in the form of energy, and if a cell needs it, it will hand off the triglycerides so that these cells can have the energy that they need to do their metabolic work. And they traffic all around. HDL, which is an ApoA1, all of these lipoproteins are involved in trafficking cholesterol back to the liver in the recycle process. There's also some newer understanding about these types of um, uh, lipoproteins that clearly seem to be evolved in some anti-inflammatory, antioxidant type properties, which probably in large part is where some of the benefit of HDL is. Some of the science is not fully clear. There's a lot still to be understood with that. But here's the big take home point. The standard lipid panel that you are getting, and again, full disclosure, that I have been getting up until recently is grossly, woefully insufficient to actually 
give you an accurate estimation of your cardiovascular risk based on cholesterol. Here's why. The standard lipid panel is only measuring, and it's actually not directly measuring it at all. In most cases, it's just estimating your LDL concentration. This is a subtlety, but this is significant. You don't need to know all this other stuff, but I really need you to understand this detail. This is very significant. LDL concentration is the, the equivalent of saying, I can extrapolate your risk for cardiovascular disease looking at the concentration of LDL is kind of the equivalent of saying, well, I'm going to extrapolate your risk of a robbery based on the weight of all criminals in your town. This is reported as a concentration in a weight. Like, it, well, that doesn't give us any information if we don't know how many criminals there actually are because my rate of risk for burglary is directly proportional to the number of burglars that there are in my area. And so while it would be maybe a fun fact to know how much they all weighed collectively, you can't reliably extract what my risk of robbery is just by knowing their weight. Same is true with cholesterol. There is no reliable, repeatable, standardized, again, standard, by which you could extract concentration or weight of cholesterol as a risk for heart attack. You have got to know the particle number. You got to know the number of robbers. You got to know the number of LDL particles in your serum. If you don't know your particle number, you don't know your risk factor for cardiovascular disease from cholesterol. Now, depending on the lab and the technology that's available, you can look for LDL particle number or you can just have your doctor check for an ApoB level. Again, remember, ApoBs include all of these, but nearly 98% of ApoBs are all LDL particles. So either of these are sufficient, but what is not sufficient to extract your risk is the standard lipid profile. This is massively important and grossly misunderstood. And again, even myself until recently, and I, I hope this is valuable for you. I'm gonna continue this discussion in the next video where we're gonna dig into how do we actually look at these levels, what levels are important to follow, and how do you fundamentally extract the risk that you have for cardi cardiovascular disease because of your cholesterol numbers. I hope this video helped. I'll see you in the next training.